So, um, just a brief uh, introduction. Um, this um, uh, presentation, uh, the title of which is uh, an empirical um, uh, validation of the computational unified field theory versus quantum and relativistic models. Uh, this presentation is uh, following up um, an accepted uh, uh, paper uh, to uh, or chapter to uh, um, Intex um, upcoming uh, quantum mechanics um, uh, book. And I, I should just mention the fact that uh, what I'm trying to uh, present in this uh, presentation is essentially uh, the gist of the four, now five, previous uh, articles describing this computational effect field theory as a candidate theory of everything. Uh, and specifically in this presentation, also a first, um, I believe, uh, empirical validation of this uh, theory. Okay. Um, Okay, just the opening uh, slide is uh, what if Einstein was right. Uh, there's a, uh, actually a, a book of mine with this title, essentially um, just highlighting, the hinting or highlighting the fact that perhaps, uh, I believe in this conference in general, uh, Einstein and people like him that have been looking for unified field theory or a theory of everything may have uh, foreseen something that we're all now searching for. Um, okay, can we go to the uh, figure one, the next slide? Okay, the dual, so essentially I, I just want to describe briefly the, the uh, 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 variation of uh, this computation of field theory, first of which is the duality principle, and essentially the idea behind the duality principle, that's actually a, um, a computational principle that I discovered in, in, the, in the field of neuroscience, and then it was applied towards this uh, theory in, in physics. But this computational uh, duality principle essentially says that when you have a system uh, uh, such as the um, uh, uh, quantum and relativistic systems that tend to uh, have a specific computational structure, in a, in a sense it essentially says that when you try to determine the values of uh, a y factor just based on its interaction with another x factor, this leads to some problems computationally. It leads to logical inconsistency and computational indeterminacy. I'll just show it briefly with case of quantum uh, computational systems and relativistic uh, systems. And essentially in both, there is, uh, from a computational uh, uh, standpoint, there is a, a flaw where there is a, a, a problem, which is in quantum systems, we're trying to determine the values of a, a subatomical target strictly and solely based on its uh, direct or indirect interaction with the probe target. Uh, in uh, uh, relativistic systems, uh, similar or, or the same computational structure, we're trying to determine a phenomenon value, which is space, time, or energy mass values of a given um, uh, object or, or event or phenomena, strictly based on the, the direct interaction of that phenomena with a differentially uh, a mobilized uh, relativistic observer. And the problem is that in this, so I call this um, a self referential ontological computational system, SHOCKS. And the problem is that in the specific pieces in which this Schrock system um, uh, actually measures, um, um, for example, I'll just give an example with the quantum uh, system, uh, before the collapse of the wave function, uh, potentially the um, target obviously occupies a whole series of this uh, probability wave function. So if we focus only on that, um, after the collapse of the wave function, only on the measured um, uh, collapsed value, which I represent here at, as n. So for all those, uh, so uh, look down when uh, where it shows the Strong's uh, quantum or Strong's uh, relativistic. In other words, in those uh, for all those um, uh, values that are not the measured, the collapsed value in the case of the quantum system, we actually get a situation that in the same computational level we have uh, the uncollapsed um, uh, values, which is all the spectrum of values, so not n, and the collapsed value, but after the collapse, it's only the not, uh, um, uh, all the values that were not measured essentially seem to both exist and not exist at the same computational level, which leads essentially to a, a logical inconsistency. I, of course, describe it in greater detail uh, in the article, but um, in simple terms, this computational structure, which 
tries to determine the value of the target or the uh, phenomena in, in, relativi in relativistic um, um, uh, systems uh, strictly based on its interaction with another entity that the probe or the uh, relativistic observer leads to a situation of logical inconsistency and then computational indeterminacy. Um, and of course, we know empirically that uh, both quantum and relativistic systems are able to determine the value of the subdomical uh, target or of a specific phenomenon, and therefore the duality principle essentially um, uh, uh, proves that this stru structure, this computational assumed structure, that solely by the direct interaction you can determine whether the, the uh, target has certain value or the phenomenon has certain value or not, leads to these problems, and therefore the duality principle essentially uh, uh, proves or points at a higher order to what they call D2, capital D2 level, which is a, a higher order computation of if the target copy observed um, so, in simple terms, the duality principle essentially has identified a computational flaw or a computational problematic structure underlying both quantum mechanics and relativity theory, uh, and it points at the need for a higher order uh, computational principle or uh, a, a system that can compute the co simultaneous co occurrences of the target probe or um, uh, observer phenomenon up here. Um, you can mm -hmm. go to the next slide, please. Uh, actually, by the way, uh, a fuller in, in the article that I've actually gone into greater detail, but this duality principle that I spoke about essentially points at the fact that you cannot have more than one such higher order uh, computational principle. You cannot have, for example, one for the relativistic system and another capital D2 for the uh, quantum system, it, it event essentially or eventually points at the existence of only one such dimension. One is framework, uh, which essentially uh, uh, talked about whether we're looking at uh, when, when this universal computational principle produces an extremely rapid series of what I call um, universal simultaneous computational frames or USDS. These frames uh, comprise all the spatial pixels in the universe at the minimal time point. The rate at which the universal computational principle produces this extremely rapid uh, series of universal frames uh, is um, uh, assumed to be C squared divided by Planck's constant. Uh, and essentially, these three, these three uh, computational dimensions that you see uh, are um, a measurement uh, of or the, their measurements of the degree of change between frames or the lack of change between frames. Look at the uh, table below. So essentially, the idea is that this universal computational principle essentially computes whether for an object. Uh, so the method computes at, uh, at, at an object, so looking at changes or lack of changes in the object. Or the same for a frame, looking at the whole uh, universal frames or segments of the frame. And the idea is that when we look at the, um, when this universal computational principle computes the consistent or, in, uh, consistent or inconsistent uh, measures of an object or a frame, you get the four, we obtain the four basic physical features. In other words, uh, mass is uh, according to this theory, the computation, uh, the universal computational uh, principle's computation of the uh, object. Uh, consistent presentation across these universal frames. Time is the universal computational uh, principle's computation of inconsistent um, measures of that object across frames. Um, and then for the frame dimension, uh, when we look at the whole frame or we look at segments of, of the universal frame, and when we look at um, the degree of consistency, those initial pixels that appear the same across uh, a series of frames um, uh, um, produce a spatial uh, measure or dimension of an object. And those spatial pixels change the value travel to a certain uh, number of pixels across the frames produces uh, or yield the energy um, uh, feature. 
Um, and then, the, by the way, the um, uh, locus is uh, parallel to the relativistic convention. In other words, the question is whether the universal computation principle uh, computes the, uh, these uh, four physical features for a combination from the perspective of uh, the object, local, or from outside the object. Um, the next uh, com uh, next uh, theoretical postulate of the, this uh, uh, theory is called computational invariance postulate, and actually uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, perhaps counterintuitive and also far-reaching potentially. Uh, it's somewhat uh, uh, um, similar to uh, Occam's razor, and essentially it says if this uh, theory is correct, then if indeed we have this universal computational principle that produces this extremely rapid series of universal frames. By the way, each universal frame is produced simultaneously all the spatial pixels in the universe um, comprising um, such a um, universal frame at a minimal time point that are all produced simultaneously uh, by the computational principle. But the, um, this computational principle is essentially said that if, in fact, the universal computational principle produces this rapid series of frames, <coughs> changes between the frames, uh, during the frames, uh, which gives rise to the four physical features that uh, as we've seen uh, in the last slide of space, time, energy, and mass. So we can say, we can identify that the universal computational principle is, in fact, a computationally invariant principle because it exists um, both in between the frames uh, uh, solely, it is solely in between the frames, and it also produces the frames and gives rise to the computation of the four uh, physical features, which are considered secondary computational high products or features of this um, computationally invariant principle, whereas the four physical uh, features, as they said, are uh, computationally invariant, they only exist uh, during the frames. Uh, as a function of the, the, the universal computational principles, computation of changes or lack of changes between the frames, but they only exist during the frames, do not exist in between the frames. And so an extension of Occam's razor principle, uh, one may say, is that if we have um, uh, one computationally invariant principle, which is the universal computational principle, existing both in between the frames and producing the frames, giving rise to the four physical features, Whereas we have the computationally variant physical features that exist only during the frame and are produced by this computationally variant principle, uh, this computational variant possibly essentially says that we then have the attributes or regard the physical, me, the physical features as phenomenal rather than um, uh, relative to the uh, um, Real or the invariant uh, uh, computational uh, 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 universal computational principle. Okay, we can go to the next uh, um, Okay, this converges, uh, and of course, it's, it's very hard to describe the whole theory in you know in a short period of time. But I'm I'm, I'm just looking to change a bit. The other postulate, uh, another postulate of the that this computational unified field theory the universal computational formula, and essentially it, it says, or it uh, um, postulates, that um, um, you can see the c squared divided by h is the rate at which the universal computational principle signified by the uh, u, so there is a, a small um, a letter there, it's a Hebrew letter, uh, but it just signifies this universal computational principle. So uh, this formula essentially says that this uh, universal computational principle, which produces this extremely rapid rate of universal frames at this uh, least divided by h, uh, gives rise to the four physical features which have this relationship between them. So essentially, it integrates the four physical features as secondary computational features arising from this negativity or the computation of the universal computational principle. <coughs> you can see that this universal computational formula also has two derivatives, a relativistic derivative, which one can see um, embeds, for example, the E equals MT squared as, um, if you will, a special case or uh, a certain um, uh, embedding within the broader 
uh, a universal computational formula, in this case, in the relativistic physics, and the same goes for the quantum derivative. Uh, the two complementary pairs are embedded, and Planck's constant are embedded within this formula, but they obviously are um, uh, um, comprising a certain uh, part of the formula, uh, which is broader. Um, I just want to say as a, as a side note that uh, I'm now uh, uh, speaking and uh, collaborating with uh, mathematicians and physicists, and I would uh, I am uh, looking for um, uh, such uh, physicists and mathematicians that are interested to uh, further explore this view. I think it has uh, a lot of uh, potential, and you'll see uh, in a second or down this presentation that I believe there is an initial empirical proof for this um, theory uh, that maybe it's more comprehensive, more valid um, um, than relativity theory in quantum mechanics. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Okay, now the next one I want to show in a graphic way is just uh, highlight some of the replications of this competition by field theory, some of the replication of known relativistic and quantum phenomena, except that it's redefined because the competition of field can be redefined space time, energy, and mass as byproducts, as secondary computational features of this very high ordered universal computational principle and its production of the rapid series of universal frames. So its explanation, it can replicate these phenomena. Its explanation um, goes beyond uh, uh, just replicating those phenomena. So I'm trying to just show some of the uh, replications of, of this theory of known phenomena. For example, relativistic flexibility of time, based on the computational uh, unified field theory, uh, theory, the definition of time, remember that time, uh, uh, the measurement, the universal computational principle measurement of object inconsistent presentations across a series of uh, frames, uh, and that's measured relative to the speed of light. So if you look at the, um, the, um, uh, the left side, large object inconsistency relative to C, if we have an object that only travels two pixels, as it were, across the series of frames, those are the gray, um, uh, the, the um, black arrow and, and the two gray uh, pixels, <coughs> whereas uh, graphically or uh, metaphorically C, the light has to travel, let's say, four pixels uh, across these uh, several frames then uh, uh, based on the definition of time as the number of object inconsistent presentations where this is done relative to the speed of light, uh, when you compare that to an object that travels very quickly, uh, um, the idea is that that object has a relatively small object inconsistency relative to the speed of light, and therefore uh, the universal computation principle would uh, compute the uh, uh, time dilation for, for the object that is traveling very uh, close to the speed of light. Um, next slide. Um, same thing for the uh, computation of the theory's replication of uh, uh, E equals mg squared. I'm not sure this is a, a perfect uh, graphical representation. I'll just explain the, the major idea here. And that is, uh, when you look at Essentially, the definition, the computation of the field theory, the definition of mass was uh, the number of object consistent presentations of uh, an object across frames. So, in other words, the more uh, uh, consistent uh, presentation uh, when you measure from uh, on the object or, or for the object, the more consistent presentations of the ob object across the series of frames, the greater its mass. So, you can see the red box on the lower left and the uh, um, uh, red um, um, square uh, traveling uh, a greater, this is a relativistic uh, uh, object, it's it, uh, displaced across the letter here in four pixels, uh, uh, let's like say uh, four pixels uh, across the frame, as opposed to a non-relativistic object which is displaced only two pixels across the two frames or the of frame. Uh, because of the constraint, the computational constraint that says that an object cannot travel more than one pixel per uh, frame, uh, if an object travels relatively quickly, uh, in other words, relative speed, it must, computationally, it must um, 
cover or, or uh, be displayed to the corpus and not the greater number of pixels, which means that if, if the action is presented um, uh, a greater number of times, so the definition of its mass, the greater an object, uh, object's um, uh, energy, the more times it is presented uh, um, across the frames, which is the definition of mass, therefore the mass increases. All I'm saying, by the way, in all, all of these uh, examples is showing how this competition uh, theory uh, can replicate and then go beyond um, the, the uh, scope of, of quantum mechanics, relativity theory, harmonize between them, and eventually, in, in this uh, paper, also um, uh, find specific instances, specific predictions where the competition of the field theory differs from quantum mechanics and relativity theory. And therefore, um, I'll mention later on the proton radius and puzzle uh, findings uh, over the last uh, year or so, which actually gave an initial validation of one of these critical predictions of this competition of the field theory. Uh, next slide, uh, figure seven. So now, space time curvature by that's also a very uh, interesting uh, replication. Um, based on the computation of the field theory definition of space, as frame consistent measure uh, and mass as object consistent measure, we can actually um, uh, look in a very different way on the fabric of space according to this theory. And essentially, because all the frames are produced, remember the computational invariance principle essentially saying that only the, the singular uh, uh, um, universal computational principle produces the frames uh, and produces all the pixels in the frames. So what we obtain is, if we look at two extremes, one is the mass of objects, or mass of objects, which are defined as objects consistent across a series of frames. You see this, the two red, um, uh, uh, the red square, which occupies the same uh, pixel across the frame. So this would be a massive object. In other words, it's presented consistently across frames and also many times across frames. Uh, like objects, um, uh, are, are those objects uh, from a computational perspective of the definition of mass are those objects which are not uh, presented uh, uh, consistently so they would actually occupy different um, uh, pixels in different frames they don't remain in the same um, uh, pixel uh, the same um, yeah, the same coordinate pixel so what we then actually is that uh, uh, those the, the light objects all the squares, all the pixels that it has occupied, they uh, have not uh, remained the same across uh, the frames. So in a sense, it would disappear. In other words, the curvature of space-time essentially can rise from this computation uh, definition saying those the massive objects remain constant and therefore they remain um, uh, as, as, as stable objects or stable points within the frame those light objects actually disappear across frames. They do not occupy the same spatial pixel. And therefore, we get this uh, result of an apparent curvature. <coughs> and again, from a different perspective, which is this computational uh, unified field. Uh, let's go to the next slide. OK, now there's a whole thing about the particle wave duality and uh, the inverse computational uh, and the computational unified field theory. It's a very interesting point. What is the postulate? is um, that uh, a, a particle uh, and a uh, wave, that there are like three three extensions. Particle is a, is a, is a computational measurement of only a single point uh, across those frames. A wave is a measurement or a computation of at least two points across the frames. Uh, so we get the, the movement or we get the, the, the uh, um, um, computation of, of a wave function. And if we extend it more, actually the, 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 the computation principle, uh, computation of the entire frame, which is not a single point uh, across frames, not uh, at least two points or more, these spatial temporal uh, measurements across frames. This is actually uh, computation of all exhaustive spatial pixels in each frame. That's what the, uh, the universal computation principle does. It computes, it uh, produces or computes all the spatial pixels uh, in, in a single frame and across frames. What that means, by the way, is that the particle, which essentially correlates to relativistic theory, looking at the definitive uh, object 
occupied a simple uh, uh, point in space and time, or even though of course it was extended later um, to look at waves. But, but originally, a relativistic model focuses, as it were, on a particle or an object which is a single spatial temporal computation. Quantum mechanics looks at multi-spatial temporal, which gives rise to this uh, um, probability wave function. And the, and the, the um, uh, um, computational type field theory uh, embeds both in a much broader conceptualization, which is the universal computational principles, computation of all exhaustive spatial pixels that are computed simultaneously across the whole frame, the whole universe, and at a single minimal time point, and across the train. Um, next slide. Okay, another replication or uh, interesting phenomenon is the, the quantum complementary pairs. Again, it's quite interesting. We know, of course, in quantum mechanics, <coughs> that the uncertainty principle, in a sense, arises from uh, the, um, uh, the constraint of the, the complementary pair. It arises, as it were, from the, the interaction, the direct interaction that exists between the, the probe and the target. Uh, but from uh, from the, the computation of the field theory perspective, it it, uh, it, it looks at it, it, it uh, uh, interprets the whole this whole phenomenon of, of complementary pairs, quantum complement complementarity, from a totally different perspective. It actually says if it is correct that uh, mass uh, in time, for example, arise as uh, uh, secondary by the computational byproducts of the universal computational principles computation of an object's consistent or inconsistent presentations across frames, you know it would be the same as looking at the half full and half empty glass. Um, the more you look at the half full glass, um, um, the less you look at the half empty glass, it, metaphorically speaking. But essentially what it says is that this complementary period arise not so much from the direct interaction, but as a computational um, uh, constraint, because we're looking at an exhaustive uh, definition of either the consistent or inconsistent um, a measurement or computation of an object, or the consistent or inconsistent computation or measurement of a frame, which gives rise to these complementary periods of mass, time, space, and energy. Um, next slide. Okay, now um, we're getting actually to uh, the highlight of uh, this paper and uh, um, this presentation, which is uh, the computation of field theory uh, uh, tends to, in a sense, um, uh, resolve the um, uh, theoretical inconsistencies that exist between quantum mechanics and relativity theory, and it tends to, to, to it's, it's a candidate uh, theory of everything. Now, in order to prove um, that this theory, or in order to attempt to prove that this theory may actually be in the of everything, um, uh, one of the things that I, I did uh, back in 2012 was to identify at least three what I call uh, differential critical predictions which differentiate this computation of the field theory from the predictions of both quantum mechanics and relativity and theory. Um, so one of those was Remember when we saw the uh, quantum relativistic derivatives of the universal computational formula, where we saw that uh, some of the relationships, the known relationships, uh, or the relationships and phenomena that are known in, in quantum uh, theory and relativistic theory, they were actually shown to be embedded uh, within this um, broader universal computational formula. This called for further work, which would actually uh, uh, study and uh, analyze what are these special uh, spaces in which we get it is true, this theory? What are the special spaces, instances in which we get, we get the known quantum and relativistic uh, 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 relationships such as E equals MC square, which was embedded in this derivative, or such as the complementary pairs, which were embedded in the, the quantum uh, derivative. So that, that was at least one uh, differential critical prediction where uh, the um, uh, computation of ideal theory has a different prediction or a different uh, uh, mathematical representation than both quantum mechanics and relativity theory. The second one was a reversal of time. Uh, sounds quite uh, counterintuitive for sure based on uh, relativity theory, but, but in fact it's one of the predictions of this computation of ideal theory. And essentially it says that uh, 
we could see the um, uh, choice, the definition of time and space are different in this theory. They are computational definitions of the universal computational principles, um, uh, computation of uh, chain consistent or inconsistent uh, presentations across frames. And, and one of the predictions that this theory makes is that uh, if we, it is possible, for example, uh, at least in principle, to reverse time. And according to this theory, uh, without going into too many details, but this theory essentially says that the electromagnetic, uh, if, if we uh, take a, a certain object, such as an amoeba or any other object, and, and we record the, that object's uh, uh, spatial electromagnetic values across the series of these frames, um, and then if we employ the um, electromagnetic um, uh, uh, simulation or um, uh, effect such that we can actually uh, uh, reproduce the series of those uh, spatial electromagnetic pixel values, in effect we reverse time. The thing is that the definition of time is different than in, in relativity theory and quantum mechanics. Obviously in quantum mechanics you cannot un collapse the wave function in the relativity theory you cannot go down the, the speed of light, which seems to be the barrier, but here there is a different prediction. Uh, the, the important thing is actually I believe that the third prediction is has received now an initial validation. And the, the third prediction was critical differential prediction was that more of the, having to do with uh, uh, mass, massive objects as opposed to massive objects or particles. The prediction essentially says that because the definition of mass is the number of consistent uh, presentations uh, uh, of an object um, uh, across frames, we uh, obtain that more massive uh, objects uh, will be presented spatially uh, 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 more consistently across frames. It has, by the way, two, two predictions. One is almost uh, identical with the, the finding um, discovered now with the frozen region puzzle. Um, obviously, the, the, this finding essentially says that to measure a mu muon particle, uh, for example, which is heavier than the electron particle, uh, and uh, we, we, we obtain a phenomena that the uh, radius of the uh, proton in which the muon is embedded uh, becomes or is measured to become uh, about 200 times smaller and 200 times uh, more accurate than the less massive uh, 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 proton encircled by the, the electron. I believe this is a, a first confirmation or very close confirmation of this uh, differential physical prediction. I will also say that um, uh, the second uh, uh, derivative of this prediction can be tested and I think would even uh, prove this uh, differential critical prediction even uh, more elegantly. Again, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but according to the theory, when we look at a series of frames, the more massive particle would actually uh, be presented in all of these frames, or in most of these frames, the less massive particle would actually, quote unquote, miss a beat. In other words, it would not be presented on a certain uh, it would, present, it would be presented at a, uh, a smaller percentage of these frames. It will not show up on all the frames. So this is a, a prediction, again, that can be tested um, uh, and is worthwhile to be tested. Uh, okay, now, essentially, just to uh, sum up things, um, perhaps the competition of the theory can be with a very satisfactory view of everything. Uh, I didn't go into all the details, and I'd be glad to um, address them. Uh, it can, it has at least uh, a way of uh, uh, resolving some of the key theoretical consistencies that exist to quantum mechanics and relativity theory. For example, I mentioned earlier that the uh, competition of field theory uh, account of the particle as particle or object or a specific object as a simple spatial temporal um, computation. Uh, of a wave uh, which corresponds closely to the, the, the wave function in quantum mechanics, uh, computing uh, remotely spatial temporal uh, computation uh, across frames, and of the, um, uh, the computational ideal theory, the account of the exhaustive uh, the universal computational uh, principle, computation of all exhaustive pixels, spatial pixels, 
compacting and against polymers, the minimal turning point, this produces a train. Uh, so this, this account can actually embed both um, from, uh, apparently probabilistic and relativistic uh, probabilistic yeah. modeling within the same uh, model and, uh, and, and resolve their apparent uh, sort of contradiction or inconsistency. Um, uh, a clear application uh, is the quantum entanglement versus feeling like signal transmission constraints. Because remember that the position of ideal theory essentially says that this universal computational principle not only computes, let's say, two entangled uh, particles with this quantum entanglement, but actually, that simultaneously, it actually computes all spatial pixels in the universe in a sense. Uh, extending the quantum entanglement as a victim, as a deduction, to fall spatial victims in the universe. So the universal computational principle continues uh, and will then fall the spatial pixels. And again, in a, in a, if we can possibly look at a single particle or, or object, we would get this speed of light constraint. But it does not negate the fact that when we look at the bigger picture, the more exhaustive picture of the computational, the universal computational practice, we get um, uh, you know, an exhaustive picture. Okay, I'm getting close to the end of the presentation. So it's identified these three differential critical predictions, uh, which can be differentiated from both quantum and relativistic models. And um, uh, I think that the third uh, differential critical prediction um, uh, is closely uh, uh, actually uh, 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 approved or uh, verified by yeah. this appropriate uh, finding. Um, the series of applications, I think you accepted that the strategy theory of everything. Uh, there are a few interesting things that may open new, uh, uh, very interesting uh, 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 dimensions for further research. One is the universal computational formula, which essentially integrates space time and energy and math completely uh, and, and uh, portrays them as secondary computational um, uh, features of the underlying singular universal computational principle. Um, you can discuss and again, that features. I'll just that. edit them and yeah, the some of the files at this point. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. We're so glad you were persistent. I know, I know for my part, I kind of did everything to drag my heels, and finally Sabah slapped me around. So we're very glad that you uh, were persistent. And it's a lot to digest, and will take us a little while to do so. But we welcome you into our club and hope we can uh, continue to correspond and develop a, a deeper understanding from both sides. Uh, does anybody have a question? Does anybody have a question for Jonathan? Yes, uh, Jonathan, this is uh, Sabah. I, I have one question. Uh, because of the mass equivalence yeah, relationship, your yeah, UFT you uh, 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 generates or produces uh, the four variables, but it really looks like three to me. If you were to Anybody add charge, then it would be, become consistent Almost with one of our professor, uh, Peter Rowland's uh, theory on zero totality. Well, because of the equivalence between, between mass and, uh, and, and energy, introduce charge. Let's see how your theory fits or is, mo is modified. Think about that. Uh, are there any other questions? Everybody's tired. We've been doing this three days. Four days. Four days. Four days. So we had to keep you up till what time is it? Midnight. <laughs> oh, one o'clock. Uh, we have. Uh, we apologize to you and your family and uh, hope we have one of our conferences uh, in Israel soon. Thank you again, Jonathan. So, so